Hey guys, welcome back to Young Americans Abroad, your best place for weekly content on young American soccer players playing overseas. My name is Austin Van Tren. And my name's Patrick Ferry. And welcome to our show. So guys, we got a new episode again for you this week, and that includes Pat. Yeah, Austin, some concerning news with one of the U.S. Uh, regulars uh, being dropped to the bench and also some rumors even having his loan cut short. So stay tuned, guys. That's right. And then we want to go into uh, some details about the Sancho and Pulisic saga, which continues uh, again this week. And finally, Pat, we want to finish our first segment with uh, some other news about another uh, recent U.S. men's national team call-up. That's right, and uh, it's good to see uh, Kenny Seth back after that preseason injury. Uh, he's getting some more performances, so we'll touch on that. But uh, looks like the, his stock's rising a little more, so exciting stuff. That's right. So let's get into our first segment. All right, guys. So to start off this episode here, we want to touch on a player in the Bundesliga who has literally played every position but goalie, I feel like, Austin. <laughs> and that's none other than... It seems like that. Yeah, then that would be uh, Weston McKinney. So Weston actually played in two games this week. And the first game was the Champions League match between Schalke and Galatasaray. And in this game, Weston McKinney came on for the final eight minutes of the game um, and tried to look to get a goal for Schalke um, and put them up late to get uh, the full three points in that game. But unfortunately, the game ended in a 0-0 draw. So Schalke only gained a point from that game. But that's actually good for them because that puts them in second in Group D in the Champions League with seven points total, and that's just behind uh, FC Porto, who have nine points. So, um, you know, both teams um, sit at, you know, uh, one and two in the Group D tables with, I believe, only Galatasaray having a point behind them. So it looks like Schalke are in, you know, a really good position in the Champions League. And, um, yeah, it was a, you know, small performance, so not too much to, to glean from it. Um, and then over the weekend, Schalke actually played Leipzig, and in this game, Weston McKinney played all 90 minutes. Um, oh, you know, started that game, obviously. Squad rotation, possibly, Austin, with the, you know, the big games, I guess. Yeah, I think I think that was some of it. Um, and, you know, Weston, well, I think they tried to do something a little different in that Galatasaray game, and Weston re- didn't really fit into that plan because um, Chalka have just had such a poor start to the season. Yeah. And they, they're just trying a bunch of different things. But um, in this game against Leipzig, you know, they went with kind of that same formula that they've done all year. And they had Weston playing kind of in that advanced number eight position, I would say. Um, But he didn't really get forward as much in this game as he had in other games. He still did get forward and tried to, you know, take down balls and um, when he gets advanced and, you know, uh, pass to the striker and, you know, just, um, you know, take down headers and stuff like that. But I was really impressed with his uh, defensive performance in this game. And I know, Pat, we were talking about it um, a little earlier before we started filming. Um, And I was telling you the position or, you know, what he did in this game, because he was just looking to try to tackle um, the ball off of any player in his vicinity and was just always running around more than I've seen in other games this year. Um, And I just really like the way he played in this game. Um, And I think that's the way we should see him play for the U.S. men's national team where I feel so far in his, in his young career, he's kind of been hit or miss in certain games where he's, um, you know, he's played tough defensively in some games for us um, at the national team level. But in other games, it seems like he's kind of been more reserved and, um, you know, less confident or more conservative in going in for tackles. Um, or, you, you know, just trying like to... A more uh, advanced or more uh, skilled Beckerman kind of thing? Or am I thinking a little bit... Uh... <laughs> Well, um, I mean, I would. That's that's an interesting um, you know, comparison to say a skilled Kyle Beckerman. I don't know if something like that would ever exist, but um, no, I can see what, what you're trying to say. And um, yeah, I, I guess that's a that's an interesting way to describe Weston's play or what we want from want to see from Weston McKinney, um, because we do want to see someone who you know. Uh, has that defensive presence that someone like Kyle Beckerman showed throughout his career. And then we also want someone who, like you said, is skilled and can go forward with the ball. And yeah, if Weston McKinney can be that for us at the national team, I think that would be, you know, amazing. And then throw Tyler Adams next to him, who is very, you know, pretty good defensively so far is obviously a very young player and is still figuring things out. But 
I like uh, I like Weston going forward from time to time. You know, he, he definitely has a lot of quality in some of the passes he can play, and also you know can pick out certain passes. He's a he's a pretty creative player. Um, obviously, he's not a number ten by any means, but you know I do think going forward he he does um, you know provide a lot of quality and can help not only Schalke but also you know the U.S. when when going forward. But in this game, you know um, Schalke has been kind of. Uh, kind of brutal to watch all season and they they're not on the same page at times and you saw that in this game a little bit but I think uh they did well in this game to you know earn that 0-0 draw you know Leipzig had a lot of chances um throughout the game and Schalke had some chances of their own and I think Weston really helped them in this game and and helped them preserve the the point on the day and I liked what I saw from him in this game so yeah (laughs) and awesome just to kind of quickly touch on a good point you brought up and I believe we've talked about this uh, often, but I don't think uh, Weston and Tyler Adams and even Pulisic have all played together yet for the national team. I could be wrong, but uh, maybe it would be, again, great to see them, like you said, Weston in that role you were describing, Tyler Adams alongside, and just kind of building that core and having more of a consistent you know, game time with all of them to get a more cohesive unit because obviously these friendlies, you know, you're, you're testing things out and it hasn't really been, uh, nobody's really been on the same page. <laughs> right. Yeah. And I think the one time we saw some of those players play together um, was when we went to see, you know, the U S men's yeah. national team. Yeah, that, was yeah. <laughs> um, that was the only game Christian Pulisic's played in the past year. So um, hopefully we'll get to see them all in November um, on the same team. Um, if all of them can stay healthy, you know, all three of those guys that you mentioned were out of the last camp. So, um, you know, they're healthy now, it seems. So let's hope uh, that continues and they get called in in the next month. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so so I think uh, it was a pretty good week from Wes McKinney. Uh, two points out of, you know, two games is is okay uh, for that Schalke team who, like we said, was struggling. I think any points right now that they can get out of games is good for them. But uh, now let's go over to a slightly concerning situation over in France. And, Pat, who would that be with? That's right, and that is with uh, Matt Miazga and Nantes. Unfortunately, uh, he has been uh, dropped to the bench, I think, going a little while back. I think it was a few games back to a 3 nothing loss to Port- Bordeaux. And that was actually the first game that their new ho- head coach, uh, hopefully I pronounced this right, but uh, Vahid is his first name. And then it's you know something along ha- Halilovic. I'm not even going to try that again. But it was his first uh, you know game, and Miazga did not... Um, Know, performed very well. I think he was at fault for one goal and then also conceded a penalty. Uh, did not look very good. Uh, so immediately it was dropped again and has not, we have not seen him uh, you know, play for nonsense. So uh, not even in the 18 in their most recent game, I believe, uh, a 2 1 win for them against Amiens. So they're winning a That's little not bit. <laughs> not good, Austin. Um, and there's even been rumors and talks that um, a lot of, you know, on Twitter and stuff that he could go back early from his loan, um, which is really concerning to just hear that from not one or two, but multiple sources. Um, so a little concerning situation, Austin. Yeah, that's not a, not a good thing, especially when we thought Matt was supposed to take that step up this year from Vitesse and show that, you know, League One is, you know, obviously a higher competition. And, you know, we hope that Matt Miazga would be up for the challenge and show that he is a, a top defender, is, a, you know, becoming a top defender. And um, that's, right. that's disconcerting. <laughs> it is. And, yeah, again, like from what we've seen, yeah, the small, yeah, a small sample size of the U.S. Uh, friendlies, he's looked pretty good in moments, I thought, kind of really taking that good leadership role and looking commanding in the back. It just seems like there's certain moments where, and I get like, um, you know, athletes do go through ups and downs, and consistency is such a huge where especially in soccer where someone could a high level like this or someone could take your spot instantly. And I think just like you saw at Chelsea, he had a really bad <laughs> game against Swansea, I think it was. Yeah, that was brutal to watch. Yeah, he got something yeah. off at halftime. Yeah, and, and then, you know, having a little, some situations like this, I just, I'm hoping that he can still pull this out, still believe in him. But, you know, there's a few moments where he just has, you know, his, his lows are pretty low. Um, <laughs> And again, you know, not trying to, you know, sound negative here, but they're, they're this low, right? <laughs> this low, right here. Yeah, right. <laughs> oh man, yeah. And again, um, getting a little sidetracked here, but he was getting some heat on Twitter, um, you know, from some of the fans there. 
Happening. Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, <laughs> can't blame him. But uh, yeah, hopefully again, he just needs to really raise that level of, of consistency, especially playing in a you know a higher, uh, better league there. Yeah, and like you said, we still believe in him. You know, he's got to be the future at least right now. We don't really have anyone else who's, I think, deserving of being the starting center back for our team. You know, unless yeah. unless Matt literally doesn't play anymore this season, then it's kind of hard to justify putting him in as a starter. But you know, I think he's shown throughout his career so far that he is the future at center back for us. But we'll have to see what the future holds for him, especially in the upcoming months and games for now. Um, Absolutely, Austin. And then uh, <laughs> switching gears back to the Bundesliga um, with uh, another saga that's been going on, a uh, battle between two young stars. <laughs> that's right. And that would be uh, Christian Pulisic. So Christian actually played and started in Dortmund's Champions League match where they got a huge win over Atletico Madrid, which was a 4-0 win for them in the Champions League. And Christian looked uh, – I didn't get to watch this game, so that's a – Minor disclaimer, um, but Christian in the games and in the highlights I saw during the game uh, looked, you know, pretty good. Um, I heard that he played very well defensively and was a big reason why Atletico couldn't get things going down the wings, or at least on his side on the wing. So that was, um, I guess, good to hear. But he also looked, you know, pretty active in this game and looked like he was creating chances and opportunities for other players. I think there was a, a opportunity where he dribbled through a few players and and passed the ball to Mahmoud Dahoud, who, who laid it off to someone else, and then they passed it for either a goal or a really good chance at a goal. Um, kind of, I, that, I watched it a little while ago now, so I'm getting a little fuzzy on the details. But then Pretty Christian tight. actually had um, another chance where he really could have scored a goal, but uh, sailed the ball just over the net. I can't say sailed it. It just went over the net when he shot it. Um, so, you know, if he connected on that, that would have been nice. But all in all, um, you know, not a horrible performance from what we heard, and obviously a good performance for Dortmund. Um, so that was cool to see. And then um, over the weekend, actually, Christian Pulisic came on for 18 minutes in Borussia Dortmund's, uh, I guess, unfortunate 2-2 draw with Hertha Berlin, where Hertha came back in extra time due to a penalty that uh, Dortmund conceded. But in this game, you know, Christian came on to kind of preserve that 2-1 lead. And I, I didn't think he looked bad. He didn't do anything, you know, crazy. Um, although he did have a really nice chance for an assist to the game-winning goal in extra time. Um, right after Hertha scored their goal, uh, they came down the field and Christian got in really good position, crossed the ball in perfectly to a player in the box who took the shot, but it was uh, deflected wide. And it was a really good play. And, you know, he looked very active in those 18 minutes and had had positive performance in that short span. So, you know, obviously, we'd like to see Christian starting every game for Dortmund. And, you know, he did start that crucial Champions League match, so that's good. But in both these games, uh, Jaden Sancho scored and looked oh, very good. good so, uh, and, <laughs> you know, if we're, if we're pitting Pulisic and Sancho head-to-head, -head, I think Sancho came out on top in both these games. However, you know, like um, I alluded to on Twitter at Buna Americans, um, I had a, a tweet about the Dortmund game. Um, I believe it was the Champions League game I, I was quoting or talking about. Um, it might have been actually Hertha's game. I'm not sure now at this point. But um, I was basically saying that, you know, I think Sancho is kind of uh, leapfrogged Pulisic at the moment. Um, you know, just based on goals and assists, Sancho's clearly been producing more than Pulisic. But that's not to say that Pulisic doesn't have, you know, a very important role in this team. Um, and, you know, I think Dortmund's not very um, – not very deep in my opinion. So I think, you know, Christian Pulisic's definitely going to get a bunch more opportunities throughout the year. But right now I just think Sancho kind of combines with Dortmund's players that they've been playing, you know, all over the pitch, like Marco Royce. I think he co combines really well with, I think he's got good chemistry. Um, this is Jaden Sancho I'm talking about. I think he has really good chemistry with Marco Royce. They seem to really like Jakob Bryn Larsen and um, Sancho and him have been playing well together. Paco Alcacer seems to have good chemistry with Jaden Sancho. Um, where Christian Pulisic hasn't really shown that uh, yet, but you know, I don't think uh, I don't think it's a bad thing. I think it's it's good competition for Pulisic, and I think it raises the bar for him. He's got to produce, and yeah, you know, to a be good a good point. player, you got to produce. So that's a good Hopefully point. Austin. We were a little concerned, I think, uh, back at the end of last season and stuff that um, you know he was kind of tailing off there and having kind of a little bit of slump and out of form, and there's no one really to push him. Um, now that someone's really emerged like Sancho to push him hard, it looks like he's, you know, getting, obviously still getting some minutes, had that start, and then 
you know, got subbed on there too. And he's not playing, like you said, again, I haven't, disclaimer too, I haven't watched uh, too much of the <coughs> games, but not playing too you know, nervous or anything like that. Uh, seems seems pretty calm and really hungry and excited to, you know, grasp this chance and make sure he stays a part of uh, Dortmund's plans going forward. Yeah, yeah, I don't think... Um... I don't think it's a concern that Pulisic won't play for Dortmund or that he'll just get benched and not see the field. I think he'll definitely see the field. Um, and he's too much of a – still a good prospect and a player that Dortmund values not only, you know, financially for their club, but also a player that I think they'll trust going forward in the future and they see as valuable on the pitch as well. So um, I like I like what uh, I've seen from Christian in, you know, in these two games this week. And obviously, Jaden Sancho had maybe a little bit of a better – a week in these two games, but you know that's uh, that's going to happen, I guess. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, good to, it's good to see Dortmund really, uh, you know, starting off strong too. Um, yeah, I'm a and- Dortmund fan too, so I'm I'm that's why I'm a little. It's I don't know. It's a little interesting in this situation because I really like, you know, Jaden Sancho from a very neutral perspective. I I really enjoy watching, and I think he's you know an incredible talent and someone who will be. When he is sold, I, I think eventually, I think he's going to fetch a massive sum. Um, and, you know, he's just a good player, really fun to watch, like I said. So uh, it's been, uh, you know, kind of hard rooting for Pulisic, but then also kind of rooting against Sancho, even though um, I like watching Sancho and I think he's fun to watch. So, um, yeah. <laughs> I feel you. It's a, it's a tough problem, but a good problem, I guess, if you're you know, from a Dortmund perspective. Yeah, still top of the Bundesliga, so... <laughs> Holding close, Austin. It's very close. <laughs> I know, I know. Bayern's coming, finally. <laughs> but, yeah, so uh, now let's move over to England and talk about our friend over there. And who would that be, Pat? That's right. That's uh, none other than our boy, uh, Lyndon Gooch, who again is uh, performing in uh, League One there with another uh, assist, his seventh assist, actually, which is exciting. Uh, he played 74 minutes there in a 3 nothing win against South End, I believe it's called. Um, so that puts them in third. I think there's still three points behind uh, Portsmouth, but uh, they're right there. And again, the only reason why Gooch uh, played 70, only 74 was um, the coach mentioned kind of still coming back from that injury. Didn't want to push, push him the full 90, but really made an impact and looked great. He uh, had a nice kind of cross into the, you know, obviously right into the box there. Uh, made a darting run, but kind of paused a little bit, was surveying the field. And then one of the strikers made a good run. It was a nice little looping uh, header he put over the goalie, but uh, good uh, vision by Gooch to pick that out. And uh, again, uh, some interesting news uh, from the coach, Austin. Uh, Obviously, we mentioned the last episode of the contract talks, and he also mentioned some things, uh, I think, in an interview or something that he really liked about Gooch and some of the young players. And Gooch's ability, 1v1 is great, it catches your eye, but it's really about that final third and the product that he delivers, and the statistics are showing that, so... The coach has mentioned those specific statistics. Um, I think he has three goals and seven assists. So if he continues this form, it'll be fantastic for Sunderland and obviously for Gooch. Yeah, that's uh, that's good praise from his manager. I like to hear that. Yeah, absolutely. And again, hopefully we can see him doing that, like we said, in uh, a higher level, like the championship. That'd be great. Uh, join CCV and the boys. But <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Anthony Robinson. Anthony Robinson, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I think, um, you know, we've talked about Gooch and how much of a, uh important role he plays for Sunderland this year in their quest for promotion. But I think Brian Shredda, uh had a really good tweet about uh, Linden this week that really put into perspective, I guess, what we're trying to say. And he basically said, um, you know, about Linden Gooch that League One is not a high level, but Sunderland is a huge club and Gooch has a lot of responsibility to help right the ship. So, you know, like we said, that, that echoes pretty much everything we've said about Gooch. And I think it puts it in, you know, very clear terms. Um, yeah, no, that's, that that's very spot awesome. I wish I had caught that. That's great. <laughs> yeah, I saw that and I was like, oh, that's exactly what we're trying to say, but it sounds a lot better. So yeah, it sounds let, me, let me bring it up in our show. <laughs> no, yeah, that's, yeah, that's ex- exactly. And just to, again, harp on that a little bit, it, this is, I just, for, it seems like from his personality, the way that he interacts, uh, you know, on Twitter and just with the Slenderland fans and just, you know, the whole spirit of the club, uh, not kind of giving up or sulking from, you know, dropping down multiple leagues. Uh, it'd be great to see him uh, bring that shit back up. So exciting stuff. That's right. He's Sunderland through and through. 
He's been yeah. there a while now. So. Got to see that light at the stadium. The stadium. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. But uh, <laughs> but uh, switching to another uh, uh, dynamic young uh, attacker over in uh, Denmark. That's right, and that's uh, Jonathan Ammon. So Jonathan played 71 minutes this week in Nordsjælland's 3-3 draw with, uh, I think it's SC Horsens. So Jonathan in this game, we're not going to go into too much detail because we didn't obviously be able to watch this game as um, you know most Danish Super League games are hard to find. But we did see a GIF thread from uh, Scuffed, who, you know, follow him if you don't know about Scuffed. Uh, yeah. you're, you're not on Twitter, I guess, or not even on Reddit, maybe, because he's, he's pretty popular on both uh, platforms. But, yeah, he, um, he did a GIF thread of, of Jonathan's game this week. And the one thing that really stuck out to him and also us when we looked at those GIFs were that uh, Jonathan's actually a really good passer and picks out some, some really insightful um, passes to play to some of his teammates. So I would recommend go checking that out. There was, you know, I think it was like three to four really, really nice passes that, that kind of showed off uh, the skill he has in doing that uh, and passing the ball. And I think that's just another underrated quality about Jonathan. You know, obviously we know about his speed. We know that he's a very confident player um, from just from what we've seen so far. But his passing ability looks to be um, – Pretty good because he had some some good passes in that game against uh, Peru the other day, uh, yeah. the U.S. Men's National Team. So yeah, right. something to keep an eye on, I guess, with with Jonathan going forward. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, you brought that up because I was actually able to catch some of that game, which is good, um, the Peru game. And yeah, uh, Eamon definitely has. Looks like he could really develop into uh, you know a great passer, which he already you know has some of that. But his vision's good. Um, playing at a you know pretty good team in the Danish Super League, like you mentioned, um, and yeah, again, there's some of those kind of I guess defensive things he needs to work on, or just maybe it's just awareness um, where he is. Yeah, the one the one thing that's that's brought up is he does lose the ball a decent amount from time to time because he does try a lot of different things, and you know that that leads to being error prone, error prone at times. But yeah, no, yeah, I mean, again, like you said some of those strengths he has, his vision is, is great. And someone we definitely would like to see combined with some of the, the young uh, strikers and uh, <laughs> midfielders that we have uh, with the, the young Yaz going forward. That's right. Always. I love to see him with uh, Sargent and Way on the pitch again. And even Pulisic oh, yeah. and, you know, McKinney and Adams and all those fun yeah. other players. So. It'd, be, it'd be interesting to see kind of where, uh, obviously this is talking a little too early, but where he would go. Um, you know, potentially the next step. Um, I was just thinking about that the other day. Yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't have a really good idea. To yeah, right. with you. A good uh, opinion. It's tough, I'm really yeah. not sure. And some people might might disagree with me at this. And if you do, comment below. But um, I, I'm not exactly sure if he should be a player that goes to a top five league right away. Um, you know, I think there would be some interest from teams in a top five league, like the Bundesliga or even, you know, like the French league or – I can't see the Premier League, but, um, you know, I, I, I think maybe a better route would be to go to a team that's higher up in some of these leagues that are outside of those top five leagues, like maybe uh, FC Copenhagen um, in the D Danish Superliga, maybe going to, like, one of the best teams in that league, or going to, you know, maybe, like, the Eredivisie. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, actually, yeah. To improve technically. Mm -hmm. Get some more looks in the Europa and the Champions League, potentially, so... Yeah, or maybe even go to like Portugal or something like Benfica. Um, I don't know. We'll yeah. see. Because <laughs> you know, situation. <laughs> yeah, and and you know, uh, it seems like North Zealand does have a really um, interesting pipeline with La Liga because they sold. Um, well, I guess they sold Emery Moore to Borussia Dortmund before he went to Celta Vigo. Right. But um, well, I guess maybe I should say the Danish Superliga seems to have a pipeline with La Liga. Now I'm getting a little confused because FC Michelin was the player I'm thinking of was from FC Michelin, which was uh, Pione Sisto, went from Michelin to uh, Celta Vigo. So I guess that's not North Chilean, but uh, maybe La Liga would be somewhere he could go. Yeah, and, that'd be interesting. And succeed. We, we don't see too many players in there. So. Yeah, that'd be exciting. Yeah, because uh, fortunately right now Shaq more uh, <laughs> stepped his game up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, one day. <laughs> <laughs> He's still a good player, so we'll see. Well, yeah. Hopefully, 
But um, yeah, now let's finish our first segment with uh, talking about Kenny Seff. So Pat, how does uh, Kenny Seff looked recently? Yeah, so uh, yeah, Kenny Seff, it's good to see him back like we mentioned before. Uh, he's been injury prone, unfortunately, um, for the past few years, and he had a pretty bad injury in the preseason here. So just over, I think, the last few weeks, he's starting to get uh, some game time and uh, some few sub appearances and starts. He actually, uh, if we want to go back to uh, last, uh, I think it was last week um, in the Europa, Europa League, I think it was, um, that Anderlecht uh, drew 2-2 to Fenerbahce. Uh, he played the full 90, looked really good. Uh, some interesting statistics for you guys here. He had 71% passing and won 12 duels. So just kind of intercepting and stopping counters, things like that. So really exciting things to you know, point out because uh, as we were talking about earlier off camera that, you know, some people are a little concerned over some of the friendlies he was in uh, against Columbia, some glaring uh, deficiencies in defense there, Austin. Yeah, we were, we were talking about that um, on Twitter. There was a, another uh, GIF thread where it showed him, you know, not getting back and kind of being lazy in defense, which in the game, he, he was kind of lazy, didn't look good defensively, so that's a fair criticism. But something we've we've heard about Kenny Seff and something we've seen from all you know the games we've gotten to see of him, and you've seen a decent amount of Anderlecht. That's one of the teams you used to watch on uh, first row. Yeah, right. <laughs> having a first row, but... <laughs> so, uh, yeah, and, we, and everything we've seen from Kenny in those games has, has shown the exact opposite, that he's someone who's, who's a very scrappy player. He, he likes to get back and defend and... You know, he kind of prides himself on always being, you know, scrappy, always trying to get the ball. You said he won, what, 12 duels yeah. in the Europa League match? So a good, a good team there. So, and again, exactly what you point out, he's he's almost like that utility kind of player. He won't be a, you know, ex, you know nationwide crazy star or anything, but he'll be a very good uh, player to kind of have uh, in our uh, arsenal there, uh, per se. And Again, he, he brings a lot going uh, forward as well. Some really good crosses he brings in and picking out key passes and exactly what Austin just said, so getting back, defending. So I'm not sure, maybe because it was the system uh, with Sarah using and all the new players coming in and out against a very uh, established set Columbia team that knew exactly what their game plan was. Uh, so again, hopefully as he gets more integrated and stays healthy, Fingers crossed. Uh, we see some more good uh, results from uh, Kenny Seff. And also, also just want to touch on uh, the most recent game uh, during the Belgian League there. It was a 2-1 loss, and he subbed in, played uh, the second half, 45 minutes, but uh, got an assist there. So good to see him uh, getting on the stat sheet, too. Yeah, that is good stuff. Um, yeah, and like you said, always good to see him back. You know, obviously he had some some injury concerns, and we are worried about that. So it's uh you know, always good to see one of our players producing on the field. So that's uh, that's it for this first segment. So now let's go over to Quick Kicks. And now, you guys know what time it is. It's one of my favorite times. Quick Kicks. So you could test Dwayne Miller. It's Altidore over the wall. All right, guys, and to kick off this segment here, we're going to head over to Portugal where Keaton Parks and Benfica B uh, won 3-2, and he played the full 90 there. And now going over to England, we want to tell you guys about one of our recent young yas, and that would be Charlie Kelman, who had another brace for South End United's U18s over B Bournemouth's U18s in a Youth Cup match. And Charlie now this season has 10 goals and 12 assists in all comps. And now another exciting young attacker, uh, Austin, Conrad De La Fuente, uh, scored another goal uh, last week in the UEFA uh, Nations Youth League there against uh, Inter Milan in a 2-1 win. So uh, keep it going, Conrad. That's right. And going over to another attacker who plays in Germany, and that would be Sebastian Soto, who scored a goal and had two assists for Hanover 96's U19s in their 6-1 win, not just a match, it was a 6-1 win, over Wolfsburg's uh, U19s. So good stuff there. And uh, again, another promising uh, outside back here, Serginho Dest got another appearance in the second half, uh, subbed in, in the 58th minute uh, for Young Ajax in their unfortunate 3-1 loss. That's right. And heading back to Germany, I want to just let you guys know that Chris Richard started for Bayern Munich's U19s this weekend in their 1-0 loss, unfortunately, to FC Augsburg. And another promising player in Denmark, Emmanuel Sabi, had a great game 
and a one-nil win for uh, Hobro, and he actually had 12 aerial uh, interceptions won. So uh, congrats to uh, Emmanuel Sabi, and uh, keep it going from there. That's right. And to end our show, we want to give you guys another young ya to keep your eye on. And this week, it's Michael Edwards, who's an 18-year-old defender who used to be with the DC United Academy and now just recently moved over and signed for Wolfsburg's uh, Academy over in Germany. So keep your, keep your eyes out for Michael, and he's definitely one to watch for the future. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Make sure you like this video and subscribe down below. And again, guys, check out our awesome social media accounts, Instagram, Twitter. We still have that 19 under 19 going. It's getting right to the end, Austin. That's right. And when this drops, um, it should be the number one player that's coming out on that day, which will be Thursday. So, so you know, keep your eyes out for that. Um, it gonna be? <laughs> yeah, it should be a player who may actually make his debut this week. We'll find out. But uh, keep your eyes peeled for that. And uh, again, Austin, um, you know, our, our usual saying here on this show, it, it, it kind of goes with, you know, one day, I think, uh, you know, after all this preparation and all this uh, talk about these young yas rising in the next few years, uh, I think it'll happen. That's right. And I think it'll happen soon. But one day we will win the World Cup. <laughs>